Prague, golden city of a hundred towers, a gem on the Moldau, a young city with a long history. The time when the capital of the Czech Republic was like a huge museum belongs to the past. Today, it's a lively city in which both old and new unite in perfect harmony. The most famous of all bridges across the Moldau is the Charles Bridge. It connects the old town of Stare Mesto with the city district of Malastrane below Castle Mountain. For 400 years, this mighty stone structure was the city's only bridge. On both sides of the bridge are well-preserved fortified towers. The initial view from the tower highlights the incomparable beauty of Prague. A harmonious picture of tiled rooftops, church towers and golden domes. For 520 meters, musicians, painters and souvenir salesmen compete for the attention of passers-by. Cameras are in abundance, and sometimes it's a little like being in a fairground. In the 18th century, the Charles Bridge was decorated with 30 Baroque statues of various saints. They were designed to blend into their medieval surroundings. Today, a total of 16 bridges span the Moldau, but this masterpiece has lost nothing of its original beauty. People rendezvous here from all over the world. The 10 meter wide bridge is supported by 16 stone arches and serves as a public thoroughfare as well as the location of grand parades and various official ceremonies. Charles Bridge, Charles Lane leads into the Old Town, where the narrow lanes of medieval days are full of the historic atmosphere of the past. Old Town Square is the name of this picturesque square in the centre of the Old Town. It's surrounded by houses and churches whose facades form a colourful blend of numerous architectural styles. The old heart of the city was first settled in 1100 AD and this is where the tourists congregate. Even today, the houses of the Old Town still add their own authentic character to the city. City Hall dominates the square. The former symbol of the determination of the city's inhabitants and the expression of their desire for autonomy. The astronomic clock and its facade are a popular tourist attraction. It not only tells the time, but also displays the phases of the moon and the sun. One of the most impressive houses is the Umanuti that is located next to the city hall. Black and white graffitos with Bible scenes decorated its neat Renaissance facade.
From the 69 meter high tower of City Hall, there's a splendid view across the square and the surrounding rooftops of the old town. A view of one of the most prosperous cities in Central Europe. On the border of the square is the Church of Our Lady of Tyne, that is also known as the Unfinished. It was originally financed by the city's inhabitants, followers of the Hussites. During the brutal re-Catholicization of the city, Jesuit monks melted down the church's Hussite chalice from which they created an aureole of the Holy Virgin Mary. The Church of St. Nicholas stands in the opposite corner of the square. A hundred years in construction, it represented a triumph of the Catholic Church over the Protestants. Its interior is dominated by an abundance of ornate Baroque, crowned by the largest fresco in the whole of Europe. The old town of Prague, that is situated between a bend on the Moldau and the circular boulevard that replaced the old city wall, has managed to maintain the greater part of its medieval character. At the end of the 18th century, the Habsburg Emperor Joseph II united several small settlements in the city district of Staromesto that became the center of the city. After 40 years of being trapped behind the Iron Curtain, in 1989 the city once again opened its doors and soon adapted to the fast-growing demands of the tourist industry. The old lantern-lined lanes are like something from a fairy tale. Everywhere, dolls are offered as souvenirs, and numerous Punch and Judy shows feature comical operas inspired by Mozart and Golem games are also performed. Without any doubt, the splendid Representation House is the most beautiful Art Nouveau building in the city. It is connected to the Powder Tower, a 43-meter-high fortified tower. If the Prussians had been better shots, in 1757 the building would have been completely destroyed as the people of Prague once stored gunpowder here. From the tower, the views stretch into the distance. On the banks of the Moldau is the neoclassical opera house that was built on the foundation of a German theatre constructed of wood. Next is the National Theatre that, following a devastating fire, was rebuilt due to the generosity of the city's inhabitants. General Wallenstein lived a life of luxury as can be seen in the city's largest garden. Today, Wallenstein Palace is an oasis of silence. Albrecht of Wallenstein designed this three hectare area below Castle Mountain and its construction took seven years. The huge garden and its ponds and fountains was inspired by its counterpart in Italy is surrounded by the palace with two wings and a riding school and stables.
The Eco Express embarks from Old Town Square. The journey leads over Moldar Bridge toward Castle Mountain and through the narrow, tangled and bumpy lanes of the city district of Kleinseiter. passing several old palaces and splendidly renovated civic houses to the extensive Rachani Plateau. The train stops frequently to allow passengers to go off on their various sightseeing tours. Next, it travels fast into the old town and returns to its starting point. Above the city is the huge complex of the castle district of Rajani. Prague Castle originated from a Slavic settlement in the 9th century AD and it's the largest castle complex in the world. The front of the main building measures more than half a kilometer is surrounded by green gardens that are laid out upon its fortified walls. Close to the main castle, the Capuchin Monastery was built in 1626 that eventually became an important pilgrimage destination. Each hour, a song of the Virgin Mary is played. A pleasant place to walk, today the gardens at the rear of the castle are open to the public and it contains large old trees, meadows and skillfully crafted stone figures. In 1355, Karl IV became emperor of the Holy Roman Empire and made Prague his capital. During his reign, the city enjoyed much prosperity. Prague Castle was once the centre of power and the changing of the guard is still an impressive event that is popular with one and all. Through the Matthias Gate there is a courtyard. Suddenly all is silent and the sound of the fountain seems to tell its own tale. Next is the old royal palace, the present living quarters of the country's president. Nearly one third of the inner courtyard belongs to St. Feitstom, a wonderful Gothic cathedral whose construction took several centuries. A number of master builders gained immortal fame here, assisted by the artists of various countries. Here, power, religion, culture, memorials, a museum, public treasury and a place of pilgrimage are contained under one roof. Numerous Gothic gargoyles are reminiscent of the Notre Dame in Paris and the historical decorations on the main gate are similar to those on the Dome of Florence. The monumental interior is also reminiscent of many great European cathedrals and the colourful glass windows designed by Alphonse Mucha captivate with their unique style. Between the walls of the castle is another famous treasure, Golden Lane, 
a mystical place with a long history. Emperor Rudolf II housed a number of alchemists in these small dwellings in which they desperately attempted to create gold. And at number 22, for four months, author Franz Kafka once lived and wrote. During the thousand years of its existence, the Rajshani has served as the residence of saints, emperors and tyrants and has repeatedly written its name into the history books. St. Veitstom towers proudly above Prague's Acropolis. Its unique silhouette is a symbol of this powerful and free city. The small lanes in the charming Kampa Peninsula look like something from the time of Soldier Schweik, authentic and unchanged. Here it seems as though time has stood still. A man-made tributary of the Moldau, the Teufelsbach, separates Kampa from the mainland. Originally it was created for water mills and now it is used for boat trips. Legend has it that the devil squeezed his tail into a water wheel. Since then, the water mills have remained motionless. Or perhaps there's another reason for this. A rack railway leads up Prague's mountain, the Petrin, and a 60 meter high mini Eiffel Tower crowns the hill. The climb up the tower is rewarding, as the panoramic view is overwhelming. The city below extends to the banks of the Moldau. Next, there is a view of the nearby Hradšani, down to the pseudo-Byzantine St. Lorenzi Chapel, and to the nearby Strachov Monastery, whose library contains more than 130,000 books. There's also an observatory and a well-laid-out rose garden that attracts visitors throughout each season of the year. The old Jewish quarter of Yosefov was built in the 13th century within its own city wall. Surprisingly, the hands of the Jewish city hall's clock move counterclockwise. The Altnoy Synagogue is the city's oldest Gothic temple. Rebuilt Zeremonienhalle behind the cemetery is also visited by many tourists who come to this district of the city. The old Jewish cemetery is an intriguing sight. One after another the gravestones are densely packed into a confined space and up to 12 corpses lie beneath each one. In Wenceslas Square, student Jan Palach set himself on fire, an act of utter despair against oppression. Thus, this is a place of remembrance. This 750 meter long and 60 meter wide double boulevard derived its name from St. Wenzel, whose statue depicts him on a horse located in front of the splendid National Museum. Famous hotels, such as the Grand Hotel Europa, are also situated in the square.
the medieval horse market was replaced by a collection of interesting Art Nouveau buildings that have been fully renovated. In the area in which until 1843 the Bohemian kings once resided is the Obichnidum, a kind of town hall, a fine example of Prague's Art Nouveau that was created by the most famous painters and sculptors of that time. Magnificently renovated, this marvelous building was reopened in May 1997. Beautiful examples of Art Nouveau can also be found in the interior. Polished marble columns, impressive stairways, ornate lamps and exquisite windows. On the edge of the city, above the Moldau, is a strange-looking rock, the Vichyrad Stronghold. This was the location of the first Bohemian castle. It was here that it all began. These stone statues are part of the early history of the Premisleiden dynasty. On this hill in around 725 AD, Princess Lebusa and her famous predictions brought to the city fame that reached up to the stars. The church of St. Peter and St. Paul was built on the remains of a Roman basilica. Its Baroque entrance gate shines out in striking bright colors. After the final closure of the castle, a national memorial cemetery was created here. Many world-famous painters, composers, writers and other important individuals from Czech history have been buried here with full state honours. It's almost as though the old fortified walls still protect the country's great heroes. A boat trip on the Moldau is an absolute must on any visit to Prague. Most of the excursion boats leave from Charles Bridge, close to the Kamper Peninsula. The journey travels beneath a few of the city's 16 bridges. The view from the boat adds a totally different perspective to the sights experienced on the city's streets. Schmettner's Moldau awakes to strong melodies that drift gently along the river as it gradually makes its way across the city of Prague. A city whose unique beauty possesses an air of mystery, is dreamlike and is sometimes even surreal. A fascinating open-air museum mixed with ultra-modern efficiency. This city is a successful combination of age-old traditions and contemporary life. The people of Prague adore their city, its charm and special atmosphere. Everyone who visits this city falls in love with it and cannot help but be totally fascinated by its special ambience. Prague, a thing of beauty in the very heart of Europe. <laughs>